Ancient dragon spells are really, really cool. What makes them even cooler is that f***ing dragons are throwing them around. They fall into the dragon cult school of magic. The ones that summon red lightning are considered to be ancient dragon spell variants. So, can we beat a game with just these spells alone? Well, not by using normal means, no. But I don't have a good track record of using normal means, so we could be able to pull this off. First, let's set up the rules as always. I can only deal damage with red lightning spells, no spirit summoning, and no main boss skips. Now, I did get some criticism on my last Elden Ring challenge run. The criticism being that the run was a bit too boring. So I'll add an extra requirement for this run. I need to get all of the spells in the category and actually use them on bosses, even if they are not the most optimal strategy. That way we can have more variety and better gauge if these spells are any good or not. Also, style points matter. With all of that out of the way, let's get to it. We pick the Prophet for the starting class, as we need as much faith as we can get. We name him Placidusax and start the game. My philosophy when creating these runs is the following. Glitches are extremely cool, so I'll try to use them as much as possible without destroying the integrity of the run, i.e. glitching bosses for insta-kills. So to get our first spells, we will use the speedrunner's most favorite glitch, the Force Quit Wrong, wrong Warp. These spells can only be acquired at the final areas of the game, Faro Mazula in this case. First, we hop on over to Lyurnia. On our way throughout here, we pick up the Two Finger Talisman, as it will be quite necessary. Next, we go to the Academy of Raya Lucaria. Here, Melina appears out of nowhere and invites us to the Round Table Hold. This detail is important, so keep it in mind. We ride up with our mount all the way up to the Four Beltrice and pick up the imbued sword key from the chest near the Grace. Then we head down to the Lower Spiller with a teleporter. This one will teleport us to a remote location outside of Faro Mazula, overlooking it. Now, we are on patch 1.07, so the classic wrong war glitch doesn't work anymore, but the force quit method still actually applies. Basically, while we are in this area, we want to fast travel to the round table hold, and as soon as we see the loading bar fill to the fullest, we want to close out of the application, or Elden Ring in this case. This will confuse the game on where to teleport us, so the game will place us at a predetermined location, in this case, at the beginning of Haramazula. This is done a lot easier on PC, but it's still quite doable on the PS4 as you can see. Somehow I managed to pull this off on my first attempt, so I was actually quite happy with that outcome. Now we need to be very careful, because if we die here, we need to do that all over again. We run through the grace as quickly as possible, and once we acquire it, we are perfectly safe. By progressing a bit throughout here, we will eventually stumble upon the Ancient Dragon Prayer Book. With this in hand, we can finally get our first two spells. The only other thing we grab here are a couple of souls, and that's it. Now we will pretend that this place doesn't exist anymore until we get to it legitimately. We give the prayer book to our boy Corin and buy both of the spells from him after farming the runes needed from the boulder farming spot in Caleb at the start of the game. We also use the spot to level our faith high enough to use them. As you can see, while the spells are super powerful, they are really slow to cast, which will make a lot of the faster bosses a nightmare. I also noticed something quite neat. The golden lightning spells when cast appear directly from my hand and then are thrown, perfectly normal. But the ancient dragon ones are coming from the sky apparently. You literally catch the lightning coming out of the sky to smite it down upon your foes. Just a cool little detail I picked up. Anyway, time for the first boss. Alright boys, first major boss. Uh, this channel is gonna be interesting because these spells are super cool. They're also extremely slow, if you can see it. But they do a lot of damage, as you can see. I need to get into phase 2 and then I can exploit one of his attacks. Damn, Mark! Oh boy! That was a lot of damage. That was more mental damage than it was physical, honestly. Whoa! Let me actually show you how it's done. Okay, so we bait two of his dagger attacks. Come on, Margaret. Not this. This is when he pulls out the sword, he's super dangerous actually. This you want to exploit. When he throws the two daggers, you just go inside. Bam! And the lightning mixed him. Fuck. Uh Bam! Margit down! Lightning! Like what? Margit! <laughs> Alright. I forgot the lightning spear has gigantic range as well. You have fought well until now. Honestly, this blockade always looked a lot more dangerous than it actually is. I love how Stormwave Castle is actually just a complete joke when you know how to go through the main gate. Uh, I think we should be having enough damage to kill Godric, but you never actually know. The only one who's going to kneel here, my boy, is you. Let's go. He's a little bit of a trickier opponent, honestly, because he does tend to attack a little bit more often. But that that hurts. That definitely hurts. Well, that's a punishable attack. The Ancient Dragon Lightning Spear doesn't do enough damage, honestly. Gonna have to stick to the Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. That sends him directly into the Shadow Realm. Unlimited power! 
Oh, this is the first time I died to Godric in a challenge run. Oh, boys. Godric down! Yeah! First shard better in the pocket. With Godric down, we acquired the first shard of the Elden Ring and are ready to continue on our path of destruction. I decided that for this run, Radan is a much smarter boss to take on as our second shard bearer. The reason for that is that he is much less annoying to deal with than Renala. He also gives us more runes, which we do want. For the time being though, we got other things to take care of first. The first one being paying visit to our boy Patches and deleting his existence from this world. We want his bell bearing that will allow us to pick up the Margit Shackle and the gold pickled foul foot that he sells for more runes. Next, we really need a better sacred seal for casting these miracles. So we hop on over to the academy, pick up the key in the lake, get hugged to death by a zombie and get eaten alive by an Ainur maiden called a virgin abductor. We find ourselves waking up in a castle inside of a volcano. Here we can pick up the plus 5 and plus 6 somber smithing stones that we can use to upgrade our sacred seal. We also pick up the best sacred seal that is possible to get in this place, the Urchery seal which is going to carry us throughout the rest of the game. Moving further along, we touch some grass, so we can return to this place a bit later. In Lyurnia, we stop by our boy EG to grab the rest of the smithing stones and upgrade our seal to plus 6, which is going to be quite enough for now. Back at the starting area, we collect the Faith Knot Crystal Tear from the Weeping Peninsula and we teleport ourselves to Kaelid to pick up the Faithful Canvas Talisman. Now it's about time we take down some bosses again. We start with the Erdtree Avatar in Northern Lyurnia. A very easy boss all in all, just bait out his huge swings, dodge them and alternate your casts of Lightning Strike and Lightning Spear. The purpose of killing him was that he drops us the Lightning Shrouding Crack tier, boosting our net lightning damage by 20%. After cutting down some trees, I wanted to get a bit spicy. See, I do want to grab all the red lightning spells, which means that I need to do some of Rani's questline in order to fight Fourth Axe. So Carrier Manor was up next. The manor itself doesn't offer any challenges really, but the boss at the end can be a bit annoying. So I decided to take care of him in a more fun way run into Loretta's arena and go past her right into this corner of the arena to the left. Quit out of your game, reload it and voila, the Loretta cheese. And for some reason this still isn't patched yet. Thanks FromSoft. I don't normally cheese bosses, but I really wanted to showcase this one. After she was dealt with, we speak to my beloved wife Urani, so we can finally start to serve her. To progress the quest far enough, we do need to kill Radan anyways, so this works out perfectly. Before we can fight Radan, we have to make our way first to the Aldous Plateau, but this time in a bit of a different way. Back in Volcano Manor, we engage the Virgin duo in a fight as by defeating them we get immediate access to Altus Plateau. The fight with them took a couple of attempts, cause the Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike behaves in a very peculiar way, that mortal beings like myself cannot hope to understand. Casting the spell is like playing the slots. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it misses, and sometimes only parts of the attack hit. Who knows? But when it hits, it absolutely melts. So on a luckier attempt, I just pretty much one-shotted them. And then we got finally access to the Altus Plateau. Here we quickly grab the Lightning Scorpion Charm in the Windhammer Catacombs. He touched it! The hell? It is behind a stone sword. Okay, so it's here. Oh, fuck. <gasps> fuck! He actually came between me! Okay, I forgot he can actually climb ladders. I hate this place. Lightning Scorpion Charm, boys. Collect a bunch of golden seeds to upgrade our restoration flask and pick up the incantation Golden Vow to get our first aura buff. There are two important bosses here that we need to take care of. The first one on my list was Godefroy, who's locked up in an Evergaul. Not too much to say about this fight, as he's essentially the same as Godric. Taking him down is a bit tricky though, cause we are quite squishy at the moment, but with a bit of patience and luck, we do manage to strike him down. Giving us the Godfrey icon, which boosts the damage of charged spells and attacks by 15%. Since a lot of the red lightning spells can be charged, this talisman is a huge damage increase, as you will see later on. Now we are going to put these spells to a test to see if they are really worth it to be called powerful, as our next opponent has 80% resistance to lightning damage. I am of course speaking about the ancient dragon Lanciax, residing just outside of the capital. Now, I am too much of a coward to engage the dragon one on one in combat, I will reserve that later for Fortisax. So I will resort to dirty tactics here. Hey, in a street fight you have to play dirty. I lure the dragon to the low ground and then quickly hop on over to the high ground again. Her AI doesn't seem like it can establish causality and so doesn't come back up for some reason. Here I just spam ADLS like I'm a goddamn power station. I was a bit worried that I wouldn't do any damage considering the 80% damage resistance to lightning, but my worries were definitely misplaced as I just melted her with her own power. With Lanciax down, we get another spell to play with, which is the Lanciax Glaive, probably my second favorite spell of all of the red lightning ones. Well, with all of the pieces set, we are finally ready for our next shard bearer. I see how fast Radan is going to take though. We're not gonna summon for him though. 
We're gonna do a done legit. Bolt of Grand Sex is not going to be used because this is not a weapon skill run. Literally, if I were to use the Bolt of Grand Sex, I would literally not even need to make this run. <laughs> Just wait, powerful. Wait, what? How did people get into the water, guys? How do people do that? What the fuck? How is there a message there? Only Jesus knows. <laughs> okay. Let's run away for a second. <clears throat> so he disappears. It didn't hit! Goddamn RNG! It didn't hit again! <laughs> okay, Radan, my boy. And the red lightning likes to miss a lot. What in the Christ? The hell happened? How did I phase out of existence? How do I discover these glitches? Look at how long does this take. That's a lot of damage though. <laughs> we didn't buff. I'm an idiot. Mistakes were made. Boy, boy. <laughs> Want to see how much damage this does? That's not enough damage to justify it. <laughs> That's piss poor damage. That's only like 600 damage. Oh my god. Let me escape that one. Okay, he's just getting melted at this point. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Lancia's <your> Glaive! <laughs> Good fight, Radan. <laughs> I actually killed him with Lanciac's glaive. Oh my god. Oh shit, the goal. Well, the goal output was forgotten, but you can't say that wasn't epic. <laughs> well, I guess I accidentally unlocked the easy mode for Elden Ring. In the future, I will need to pass this knowledge down onto the games journalist. With Radan down, we can now access the capital, but we can also access Nokron, where we will go first. We obliterate my worst half with Lightning Strike, grab the Grace in the forest, cause we will return here later on, and collect the Finger Slayer Blade at the bottom of the Hidden City. Backtracking now to Rani, we deliver her the Blade, and in return she gives us the Carrion Inverted Statue, which we will use later on to acquire the Curse Mark of Death and fight Fortisax. I think it's about time we actually enter the capital though, and standing in our way is the one, the only, Draconic Tree Sentinel, or, as I like to call him, DTS. This is also the bane of my existence. Thankfully, he gets melted. Okay, but he's going to be a big problem, like, we don't have openings for his attacks. I don't think we can actually hit him without him hitting us as well. Ooh, this guy's always a problem if you have slow attacks. Can we do this, maybe? Let's try it. No way in hell we're gonna get that one off. Especially because the spell misses a lot. Okay, DTS is a problem, guys. Okay. Red lighting against red light. Oh, this doesn't do any damage. What is this shit? I think we need to destroy him like in the beginning, or otherwise we're gonna be stuck here for an hour. Okay, that hit him and that didn't hit me. What? Red lightning. Way, way too much red light. Lots of slave! Oh! <laughs> okay, he's dead. He doesn't have any chance anymore. He's immediately dead. Come on, my boy, give me some opening, please. He he's like an enemy with the least amount of openings besides another man. <laughs> oh, I slapped him to death. Good fight. That was amazing. Wah! Lancia's glaive one more time, and he's dead. Bam! And the dog is gonna kill me if I don't. <laughs> Get away from me, dog. Okay. Let's try... This is our test phase for Horalu later on. We need to actually figure out what can we do against Finn that we can do against Horalu as well. It's not as much damage as I was hoping for, honestly. Can we hit his? He does tend to walk a lot towards us, so... Hmm... There are a couple of ways we can probably hit a Ancient Dragon Lightning Spear here. Yeah, we have enough time. Did he just jump over it? <laughs> God for you, menace. Okay, not goodbye, it seems. 
Lancia's Glaive has its purpose, definitely. It can be used to some extent in a good way. Let's see how fast we can destroy Morgoth. We're gonna Margot check him, of course. And then gonna blast his ass with the Red Lightning Strike. If that hits him at all. Oh my god, Morgoth. Oh my god, Mor that hurt me. I'm not going to be allowed to call this a challenge run if you're this easy. Oh my god, we are sending Morgoth into the Shadow Realm, guys. Whoa! <laughs> Good fight, Morgoth. GG, Morgoth. That was actually... That was the most epic fight that I did in my life. <laughs> that destruction of Morgoth was definitely shocking. Pun intended. But with a resistance of lightning of minus 20, what can you expect? Anyways, that fight was anything short of epic. After talking to our lesser waifu Melina, we received the Rolled Medallion, which grants us the access to the mountaintops of the Giants, our next destination. Alright, now we move on to the harder parts of the game, so we need to prepare ourselves accordingly. First, I want to get my seal upgraded to the fullest for unlimited power. That's why we want to complete Vare's questline. I won't go into the details here, so TLDR, we talk to Vare, kill an invader, talk to Vare again, kill an innocent maiden, talk to Vare again, and boom, we are anointed. After our anointment, he gives us a teleportation device which ports us straight to the Mogwin Palace. Here at the top of the dynasty we find the plus 10 somber smithing stone. The rest of the upgrades we pick up in the mountaintops and the forbidden lands. One in a giant skull located in the forbidden lands, and one after killing a scarab located just inside the mountaintops of the giants. The plus 9 we grab just from Kaelid in front of the divine tower here. We upgrade our sacred seal to the max and boom. Now we are much better prepared. Now it's finally time for the fire giant. Alright, let me see how I want to deal with this guy. That's a good start. What? Toto, what the fuck? What the hell is wrong with you? I swear I'm not doing this for content, guys. I'm <laughs> just being stupid. <laughs> he's, gonna he's gonna die immediately once I start casting lightning strikes. And then we can... Shoot lightning! Jesus Christ, that's a lot of damage, guys. <laughs> I am the fire giant. Direct fire giant! You are no match! Fire giant absolutely obliterated. Alright, seriously, who came up with this spell? It's just a perfect giant boss destroyer. The final boss is going to be so much fun, I can already guarantee it. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We still have a lot more to do before that. Well, with the giant down, we can move on to the grand finale. Before that, I quickly hop back to Mogwin Palace to farm a couple more runes. That way, I'm even better prepared for the upcoming bosses who have a tendency to one-shot me a lot. First of all, we need to take care of some Apostles and Nobles, aka the Foreskin Duo. They did annoy me in a couple of attempts, but I honestly suspect that the ADLS damage is completely broken. Just look at the damage numbers here. This is even worse than Comet Azur. Abusing the pillars to my advantage is also helping quite a lot when challenging this boss fight. Style points! <laughs> After their defeat, I go on and pick up the Golden Lightning Fortification Incantation. It gives us a whopping 60% lightning resistance. There are two bosses ahead in which this will prove to be a game changer. The first one of them resides in the deep root depths, but in order to summon him we need to grab the Curse Mark of Death first, because reasons. So we go to the Divine Tower of Lyurnia, place the inverted statue we got from Rani onto the pedestal and jump into the inverted tower. We run past everything here and arrive at the top of the tower to look at Rani's burned body and collect our Curse Mark. We go back to Nokron and jump into the next obstacle, the Valiant Gargoyles. Usually these guys are a giant pain in the ass, and to be honest, they still quite are, but we deal so much damage that it only took 3 attempts to get lucky enough and land the lightning shots needed to take them down. So with access to the depths in epic fashion, we run past everything again, touch some grace and get ready for the worst. Thea Sims try to stop us in our tracks, but to no avail unfortunately. Our damage is just too powerful and our determination is unending. So with a bunch of lightning strikes thrown, Fia Sims go down under. Now after talking to Fia a couple of times and falling for the oldest trick in the book, a warm embrace of the woman's lap, we are finally, finally ready to take down the Lich Dragon Fort Sax. And remember, he has 80% lightning resistance. Alright, the most epic boss team of all time. 
My lightning resistance is 69, boys. Fortisex is going to be a problem. What? Fortisex? What are you doing? He put lightning on my ass. Oh my god. They found our challenge, boys. Jesus, Fortisex. Okay. There we go. Lancia is glaive. Whoa! That didn't hit me? Oh my god. Okay, we hit the head. A little bit. A worthy opponent indeed. Need to reapply the lightning fortification, guys. Shit, death blight, death blight. Okay. Almost died by death blight right there for a second. I have like three more casts. So if they don't hit, we need to actually retry. Fort sex. Jesus. He's actually a menace. I'm gonna I'm gonna bank on it here. Bank on it! Destroyed. I gambled at the second. Oh my god. Like, without the lightning protection, it would be possible, but it would be 10 times harder. Lightning fortification actually rips ass here, guys. A worthy opponent and an epic fight indeed. With him down, we are able to grab our next and final Ancient Dragon spell, Fort Sex Lightning Spear, which we'll make great use of in the upcoming boss gauntlet. Let's actually go kill Mo first. Let's go kill Mo, then we're gonna go to Malikef, Gideon, Radagon, and so on. Mo. Be respectful against your enemies, please. We need a Mo Shackle. I'm gonna go back, pick up the Mo Shackle, and then we're gonna come back here. What? That is cheating, I'm telling you guys. Bye bye, Mo! No, he healed! My god, no! Do you know Ancient Dragon Ball Sex? <laughs> That's honestly a good joke, not gonna lie. He's dead. He cannot survive this good fight, Mo. You have fought well, Mo, but not well enough, my boy. Is this the easiest run so far? Uh... It's not actually easy, like, we do a lot of damage and we ki kill bosses very fast, but I still need to strategize. Let's try Plassi first, huh? Plassi is going to be definitely easier than Malikith. Time to run, boys! Dragon Lord, Plassi Pussy, let's go! Jesus Almighty! I didn't think we were gonna do this much damage, guys! Okay, we're gonna die here because I'm not having any luck here with him. There we go, plus he do sucks down, boys! <laughs> uh, Malekith time, right? Not second phase yet? Okay. Immediately sent into the Shadow Realm, okay. Oh my god, I cast the wrong spell! That was not the spell I wanted to cast. Malekith die! Good fight, Malika. I'm actually afraid for Radagon's life at this point. Radagon might just completely fall over. Tactical nuke incoming! <laughs> <laughs> the poor guy didn't even finish the first sentence, let alone the entire the entire paragraph. <laughs> Maybe he slipped. This is what we need: Lord's Divine Fortification. Bam. Oh, we also need Black Flame Protection, that's actually true. Black Flame Protection is gonna help us with uh, Godfrey. God damn, the triceps on this guy are absolutely incredible. <laughs> that's also a lot of damage, not going to lie. That's phase two. Can we strike him down here? We can. Very risky though. We're gonna have to trade with this guy. There is no other chance. I'm running out of stamina. No! <laughs> we need to exploit the beginning of second phase. <laughs> oh, 
Ja! Haya! Oh no! I made a mistake! Why aren't you in the UFC, Godfrey? You would literally be the heavyweight champ. Come against the wall. Fuck! Goddamn wall, Godfrey! What the hell? <laughs> I knew that was going to kill. A fair trade indeed. Alright, grand finale boys. Well, the other one is dead. Forty sacks, give me your power, my boy. We are trading absolute bombs with this guy. The bastard. Good fight, Radagon. You have fought well. Until now. Alright, let's see how fast Elden Ring is gonna survive. Or die. This is not even fair. Bye bye, Elden Beast. You have fought well. Until now. Good fight, Elden Beast. What started as a challenge run devolved into a showcase of how busted Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike is. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this little spell-only run. Anyways, subscribe for more Souls content, and I'll see you in the next one.